please be seated. The court is now back in session. And Mr. Vines, are you ready? Nimmo, are you ready? Witness, I am ready. President, thank you. And I'd like to hand the floor again to the International Deputy Co-Prosecutor to put further questions to the witness. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. A while ago, witness, we talked of the arrest of Hearn, Cham, and also Hon. And you didn't recall that anymore. Before those high-ranking cadres were arrested, alongside other cadres, did Runim carry out his own investigations? Before somebody was arrested, did Runim undertake any investigation? Answer. He would see who uh, did right or who did wrong, and if somebody did wrong, the person would be removed. I did not hear the witness's answer, Mr. President. So my question My question was whether Rune carried out his own investigations before arresting cadres such as Tacham, Tahun, Tahun and others. I do not know whether you have a problem in your yes sets, but we, there is a hum in the uh, yes sets, and we didn't hear the answers, uh, the witness's answer. Bon, mon appareil n'avait plus de batterie, donc je vais demander à ma collègue. My equipment didn't have any battery, so I asked my colleague. I'm going to have to ask my colleague what the witness said. Monsieur le témoin, est-ce que Witness, do you know whether Runim sometimes received orders or instructions from the upper echelon with a view to arresting cadres? Nimmo, did you know that Runim received her instructions or orders from upper level for arresting someone? President, please hold on, uh, witness. And Defence Council Copper, do you have the floor? Uh, yes, Mr. President, I keep objecting to this kind of question. Uh, Runim was upper echelon, um, so uh, either it has to be uh, very concrete as to who was ordering him, if at all it was possible uh, for Runim to be ordered. It would appear, Council, we have had the debate yesterday, the same discussion yesterday. Yeah, but, but what does upper echelon mean when it comes to Runim? I don't know. Well, why, why don't we wait for the answer? Uh, yeah, but, but, but we can plead later. I know we come close to pleading, like but not yet. Upper echelon, there is that, that. It's not like it's not a person. I mean, it, it needs to be a person who's ordering. It's not like uh, it's it's a machine or or something. What is the upper echelon here? Witness, do you know whether Runium sometimes received orders or instructions from Phnom Penh, and in particular from Pol Pot or Nguyen Chia, for the purpose of arresting cadres in his zone? Do you understand the question, uh, Mr. Witness? Witness. 
he supervised uh, that area, and if somebody did not uh, do good, the person would be removed. Nimur, did you know if Runyam received uh, an order from Pol Pot or Nguyen Chi for the purpose of arresting uh, someone? Answer, I did not have a full grasp uh, regarding this matter. Witness, did you know from what you were able to learn on the regime whether the cadres who were arrested were prompted to denounce other cadres? I did not uh, know about that. Uh, probably no. There was no such cases. I do not know whether you recall what you said earlier. I'll read out to you an extract. And it is this uh, come a statement E3 slash 10762, page 15 in Khmer, and in Khmer 00923746 and 47. There is no French translation. I'll read or quote it in English. And to my thinking, the purges were the result of the implications by torture inflicted interrogations which were supposed to be expeditious. For example, I'm arrested and you are traitor, but I have to get you involved through my implication. Then a little further down, I would just put all the names of my colleagues to survive the torture. When torture is severely inflicted, we just implicate others, and such implications would become perceived as true. For this reason, so many people were killed. As in the case of the arrest of a zone chief, you can see how many people he implicated through his confession. For example, I'm an innocent person, but when I'm implicated, I will eventually become his affiliate. And then at page English 01066800, Khmer 00923747, you also said the following, I quote, I believed, and it was true, that it was a process carried out in Phnom Penh at that time, which killed tens of thousands of people through the arrests of the whole link or affiliates, including the innocent. Believe me, it was true, end of quote. Did you learn at the time that indeed such a process of torture followed by denunciations occurred in Phnom Penh? Witness, please hold on, and Councillor Copper, you have the floor. The witness has been read something um, back which uh, is an opinion which he was thinking. Um, witnesses can only testify as to uh, what they know, uh, what they saw, what they personally experienced. So to uh, put back before him uh, a quote of, uh, from his own testimony implicating what he was thinking must have happened is asking for speculation. Sir, sorry, Council. It, it's something he himself said at the time. We have frequently um, confronted witnesses or civil parties what they have said previously. Where, where is this well, suddenly then, coming then, from? Then, then don't bother giving the instructions to the witnesses anymore that he can only testify as to what he saw, experienced, uh, heard, etc. Then, then forget about that instruction as well. 
No, no sorry, Council. Um, we, we have, as I said, we have had frequent, this is a practice for two years, which we have allowed for everybody, and you have done it plenty of times. Having said that, nobody hinders us to clarify with, with the witness if this is an opinion, if this is something he had experienced himself, and we will then deal with this in the verdict. My question is plus tout autre. My question, Madam Judge, was that he, whether he knew at that, that time there was a process of torture followed by denunciations in place in Phnom Penh at the time. He can say he knows about that or not. Monsieur le témoin, est-ce que vous saviez en... Witness, did you know whether between 1975 and 1979, whether people were brought to Phnom Penh, tortured, and that those persons implicated other persons and entire networks, for instance? Was that something you were aware of at the time? Or from what I have read, that was something you only got to know subsequently, after 1979. I did not know about that anymore. The question is, between 75 to 79, were tortures inflicted upon those who were brought to Phnom Penh in a, so that they could answer questions, so that they could have confessed? Were they tortured? Witness, I did not know anything about that. President, uh, witness, please hold on. And Councillor Kung Sum On, you had the floor. Kung Sum On, thank you, Mr. President. The witness actually answers the question. So please, uh, the, uh, facilita uh, the facilitator should not intervene. And she should only intervene when the witness does not understand the question. So uh, please, uh, Mr. President, give instruction uh, to her. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. I am afraid that with all these interruptions, I'll have to take up too much time, coupled with the technical difficulties we face. I'll try to press on. I'll have you react to what you told DC Cam. It is a very short statement in document E3-9084 on page 72 in French, 97 in English, and I believe that in Khmer it is 00057713. And this is what you stated regarding persons who were arrested, and I quote, if someone were arrested, that necessarily meant that a person had betrayed. That person, therefore, had to be executed. I was not in agreement because I knew that they didn't have to force the person to speak by beating them up or extracting their nails. No one could endure such torture. You were obliged to confess according to what they were expecting of you, end of quote. When you state that someone, well, when, when someone was arrested, it necessarily meant that a person had betrayed and that person therefore had to be executed. My f f question to you is as follows. When Anka arrested someone, was Anka always assumed to be always right? People would be uh, monitored, and if uh, they were found out, then if they were found out as uh, traitors, they would be arrested. 
However, there was no arbitrary arrest. They had to be uh, monitored. And before someone was accused, the person would be uh, monitored, that is, in terms of his activities. A while ago, we talked of some cadres of sector number three who had been arrested and who disappeared. Can you tell us whether the leaders of sector one were also arrested by Runim? No, there was none. Vous aviez mentionné de... When you were interviewed by DCCAM, the document E3-9084 on page 44 in French, 60 in English, and in Khmer 00057680, you mentioned that Asai was the chief of Sector 1 uh, and after him the following question was asked Tavan and your answer was Tavan and then the people of the southwest zone arrived end of quote. Now did you know a certain Tavan, and do you know whether he survived the regime? Nemo, is uh, Tavan alive? Did he survive the Khmer Rouge regime? Witness uh, which Tavan? Uh, in which sector he uh, was in? I do not recall uh, the person. President, uh, Deputy co prosecutor you should put the first question to him, whether he uh, knows Tawang, before you go into the uh, details. So if you go straight to the detail, then uh, it is a loss, and it's going to cause uh, other problems. Precisely, I believe that he knew about that at the time when he was interviewed by DC Cam, and he was the one who mentioned his name. Witness, I'm talking of Sector 1. Did you know Tavan, V-A-N-H, Secretary of Sector 1? You can tell us what happened to him. Tavan, what you Nemo, the wine was uh, secretary of a sector one. Do you recall his name? Answer, no, I do not recall him. Is, uh, is the question whether I went to sector three? No, la, la question n'était pas de savoir. The question was not whether you went to Sector 3. All I did was to read out to you a statement you gave to DC Cam in which you mentioned the name of Tavan, who had replaced Tasai as Secretary of Sector 1. Do you recall that? No, I do not recall that. I forget about it. For the record, for the transcript, two documents, E3-2285, which is an S21 list titled Name of Prisoners Smashed on the 18th of October 1977. 
and the page in English is 0087-3644, and Khmer 0009307, and there is no French version. We find number 122, that is the name of Chie Hyun, H-U-O-N, alias Van, V-A-N-H, Secretary of Sector 1, who entered S21 on the 20th of June 1977 and executed on the 18th of October 1977. Witness, do you remember the leaders of Sector 2? And do you know whether some of them were arrested at the time when Ronim was the chief of the Northwest Zone? Any more? Do you understand a question, uh, Mr. Witness? Witness, I do not recall that. I forget about it. And at that time, I did not have any work relationship with them. I only worked in my area, leading people to work in the uh, in the rice fields. As for uh, others, I did not uh, have any uh, relationship with them. D'accord. Vous dites avoir. Very well. You state that you have forgotten. So, to refresh your memory and to see whether you recall that, does the name Ren, R E N, his full name, Sre Un, alias Ren, ring a bell to you? Nimul, do you know Sre Un, alias Yen? Answer no. I do not know this person because I was at my level and I did not have any uh, contact uh, with them. Well, fine. Uh, closer to you, I'm going to read out certain names of people, of cadres in uh, Sector 3 where you were working. Did you ever hear about uh, a so named Ku, K O U, that is, who was the Deputy Secretary of uh, Region of Sector 3? Ku, the Deputy Secretary of Sector 3. Are you familiar with uh, this person? Answer No, I did not. Que vous connaissez un Do you know a son named Kier? H E A or H E A R, Kier, who was the secretary of Plum Sampo district at one point in time? Mohir. Here, the name is here. Did you hear of the name here, who was the secretary of Sampo, Plum Sampo? Answer. I have never met him, and, and I have never heard of that name. Est-ce que vous avez entendu? Did you ever hear the name of Chan Un, who was the secretary of Mongol Borei District? No, I did not. But I did not.
I was trying my best to perform my tasks at my location, not the tasks at other location in charge by uh, other people. Well, I'm not going to continue with this list, uh, but for the record, uh, we have on the case file the confessions of who who was the Deputy Secretary of uh, Region 3, E3-7372. Uh, he is Confessions District uh, uh, Secretary of Plum Sampeu, E3-759, as well as the Confessions E3-7353 of Chan Eun, who was the District, uh, district Secretary uh, in Mongol Borei District. All of their three confessions date back to the beginning of 1978, that is to say before the arrest of Ruhnim. Witness, um, do you know if leaders in Sector 4 were arrested by Ruhnim because of uh, the situation uh, in uh, that sector? Do you hear the question? I do not have any ideas about that issue since I uh, was working at my location and other people were at theirs. I'm aware of that witness, um, but I simply would like to read out what you said to DC Cam, that is statement E3-9084 regarding uh, the leaders of Sector 4. In Khmer, it's at page 00057680. English on page 44 and in English in the draft on page 60. So listen carefully to what you said previously. And I quote, um, uh, in the regional committee of Sector 4, there was Tavuk, V-O-U-C-H, Tasui, S-U-Y, and later, when they arrested Sui, only Vut remained, as well as Hing, H-E-A-N-G. Later on, uh, they um, arrested Huch and Ving. It was really a mess. End of quote. So do you remember the so named Ta Sui in Sector 4, as well as Ta Hing? I can recall the name Sia, uh, but I did not uh, see them. I uh, do not know where their whereabouts. So we uh, separated from one another. This person was from the, the same uh, location where I was from. Uh, in the same statement, E3-9084, in French on page uh, 54 and 55, English in the draft, page 74, and in Khmer, 00057692, you said... Um, that uh, you reported to Ruhnim that the people in Sector 4 were dying of hunger. And I quote, afterwards then he knew. And so he went to investigate the situation. And that was the reality in the field. Later on, the region, uh, the sector and commune chiefs uh, were arrested. There were 
one, there was one arrest after the other, and then he started by arresting Sri, S-U-Y, who disappeared before everyone else. Uh, and then he arrested, he, he arrested Sri, and then he arrested the people in Sector 4, Ta Vuj and Ta Hieng. After the arrests, they arrested Vong, V-O-N-G. He was able uh, to um, resist arrest for a few months, but then he was arrested in the end. End of quote. This is what you stated a few years ago, about 10 years ago, to DC Cam. Do you remember that? Do you remember that Ruhnim arrested Sri and then arrested a whole series of cadres in a Sector 4? I cannot recall uh, the statement that I gave uh, through the DC camp. I was located in my area and I never went to other locations under those people's responsibilities. For the record, um, we have on list E3 slash 2285 at English page 0087-3637, Khmer, 4 times 0, 9304. So this is a, an S21 list entitled The Name of the Prisoners Who Were Smashed on 18 October 1977. So these are the people who also entered S21 in July 1977. And at number 34 on this list, we can see Sui, S-U-Y. His full name was Sun Hun Elias Sri, who was the Deputy Secretary of Sector 4. And we also see Heing, H-E-A-N-G, who was mentioned uh, by the witness before DC Cam who was the secretary of Sector 4, who entered S21 on 13 March 1978. This is document E3-1982-42, English 3855 French 0087-0455, and Khmer 0004002. Two, four. So witness, please bear with me. In Sector 5, did you know the secretary of Sector 5 who was called Hung? H-O-E-N-G. Hương in sector number five. Hương, sector number five. Do you recall that person? Witness. The Hương was gone. I do not know where he went. I know Hương, uh, he disappeared. Did you know his deputy? He said to DC Cam that this person was called Shnang. C H H N A N G. Shnang, the child of Ruo, said the witness. Yes, indeed. Ronin's child. What's his name? Shnang, and what was his position in Sector 5 with Hun? Shnang, what kind of the bomb? 
Nang worked at uh, sector number five. Was he the chief or the deputy chief? Witness. Chnang was the child of Ruanyum. He worked at uh, sector five. Uh, what was his position? Answer. Uh, uh, that person was the child of Sao Pem, and Sao Pem and Ruanyum were in law. What was his position, Chnang's position? Answer. He was quite young. Chenang uh, got married uh, with the child of uh, Sao Pem, and uh, the two, Runyam and Sao Pem, were in laws. Fine. With uh, the leave of the President, I'd like to person from this who not to put questions to the witness that I did not put to him, but thanks anyway for the information. Do you know, witness, what happened to the uh, chief of Region 5, Tahun? Was he among the people who were arrested by Ruhnim? <laughs> President, I do not really understand. Now, you want to ask uh, uh, me to uh, tell the uh, staff member there to stop intervening while you were uh, while you are asking questions. So, could you please uh, clarify this for me? No, no, Mr. President. No, no, Mr. President. That's not what I was talking about. It's just that before the staff person from this who asked for the age of Ruh Nim's son and if he was married, etc. These are questions that I did not put to the witness. So I would like her not to put additional questions uh, to the questions that I uh, am putting to the witness. But uh, I simply would like to put my question again to the witness with your leave. That is to say, what happened to Tahun? Uh, that is to say, the, re the leader of Region 5, was he among the people who were arrested by Ruhnim? Um, the, the question has been asked already a few times in this forum, um, but I'm objecting now anyway. Um, why would any of the sector members be arrested by Ruhnim? Um, they could be arrested by, any, by anyone uh, if we don't know. Uh, so I think the question should be formulated neutrally, was he, was he arrested? And if yes, by whom? Well, let me rephrase the question, witness. Um, so was Tahun arrested when Ruh Nim was the secretary of the Northwest Zone. President, uh, Deputy Co-Prosecutor, could you put the question again? Nemo, please assist the witness. Try to make the witness understand the question, but do not add uh, other question to the one put by the Co-Prosecutor. And you can uh, take note of the question asked uh, so that uh, the question is exactly what uh, the party asks. Co-prosecutor, could you repeat your last question? Don't. 
in Sector 5 was Tahun arrested when Ruknim was uh, the chief of the Northwest Zone. Did Ruknim arrest uh, Ta? Could you repeat the question, Mr. Coprosecuta, because I could not get it. Of course, my question was very simple, in fact. We were speaking about Sector 5 and about its chief, Ta Hun. Was Ta Hun, H O E N G, arrested when Ruknim was still the secretary of the Northwest Zone? Was Ta Hun arrested? Answer. Hun was removed. He had been uh, assigned to uh, North West and then he was removed. Well, um, we see on the case file, among other documents, the confessions of Men Chun. Elias Hun, who was the secretary of Sector 5, and this is at E3 slash uh, 2474 and at E3 slash 1558. And now I'd like to turn witness to the arrest of Ruhnim. What do you know about the arrest of Ruhnim? Ruhnyam was arrested by the Southwest. Southwest arrested uh, Ruhnyam because it was said that Ruhnyam joined hands with the Yuan. So uh, the Southwest arrested uh, him. When you're speaking about the Southwest, are you speaking about, or could you speak about specific people who then uh, had some kind of position in the Northwest Zone? The Southwest arrived after Tabok and Tatut. In fact, these people uh, came and arrested came and arrested uh, uh, peop the former uh, people in the northwest. Your mic is not activated. Merci. Thank you. So you said uh, that Ruhnim was arrested because he was accused of being an ally of the UN. So did you attend meetings where Southwest Zone cadres told you and provided you with details regarding uh, this alliance with the UN or this betrayal? The Southwest 
conducted the arrests uh, and uh, uh, were arrested by uh, those people. They accused uh, the Southwest uh, people betrayed. The question, in fact, is about the meetings, uh, whether or not you attended the meeting or where uh, there was a discussion about uh, the betrayal. Answer, no, I did not attend any meetings. I was focusing on my work. So based on what you might have been told, was Ruhnim surprised to be arrested? Uh, Did Ruhnim uh, feel surprised when the people came to arrest him? South, the Southwest came to arrest uh, Runyam, and he brought to a place where uh, Runyam confessed that he betrayed Anka. Do you know if when he was arrested or in the days that preceded that arrest, do you know if Runyam tried to resist the cadres who had come from the southwest zone. Before Runyam uh, was arrested, answer. The Northwest people were accused of uh, betraying Anka, so those people were removed, and Ruhnyam was removed and sent to another location. He, Ruhnyam was removed together with his family and uh, children after he was accused of uh, betrayal. How did you react when you learned that Ruhnim had been arrested in Batambang? I did not have any reaction. I was under his uh, command and I do not know uh, the accusation made by the upper echelon against him. No. In your DC camp statement, E3 slash 9084, at um, the draft page in English, page 30, on pages 22 and 23 in French, and then Khmer 00057656. It's very short, and you said the following. When he died, I regretted it. They killed their own. In fact, all of the cadres back then died. No one survived. So why did you regret um, Ruhnim when he was arrested? I regretted it because I do not know how could he betray Anka. Uh, they accused of one another. The Southwest accused the Northwest uh, betrayed Anka, and they arrested those people. Then. Uh, I was removed to uh, be stationed at Chenang. First, I was placed in Odombong, then I was removed to Chenang.
Dans tous vos in all of your dealings with Rufnim back then in, during the DK period, were you able to perceive at one point in time something that might have led you to think that Runim was disloyal, that that uh, he wasn't loyal uh, to the um, CPK? The Southwest accused that uh, Ruhnyam betrayed Venus. Did you observe personally uh, that uh, Ruhnyam betrayed Anka? Answer. He did not commit any mistakes, uh, and the Southwest, in fact, accused uh, the northwest of a betrayal. Those southwest people came to arrest the northwest people. So, uh, in fact, uh, we arrested uh, each other. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm aware that my time is running out, and the civil parties will need five to ten minutes. And I still have a few questions to put, so I'd like to know if I could continue uh, until a quarter to 11, uh, to 12, correct, the interpreter. President, uh, no, uh, time is not uh, added to, for you. And if it is called the lawyers for civil party have questions, they can now have the floor. But, uh, Mr. President, I would like to uh, give my time to the Deputy Co-Prosecutor, President, and you may now proceed, Co-Prosecutor. Well, I'm going to try to finish as quickly as possible, and I will n not speak about the purges in the Northwest Zone after the arrest of Ruhnim because we have enough elements on the case file. So I'd like to get back to what Nunchia said regarding Ruhnim's death, uh, because he said that he did not regret it. And this appears at E3-4202. This is Gina Chun and Ted Sambat's book, which is called Behind the Killing Fields. In English, 0075-7530. In French, 0 Eight four nine four three three and Khmer zero zero eight five eight three three six and I'm going to quote in English because uh, that is the original language of the book. Among the accused were Von Vett, Koi Tun, and Northwest Zone Secretary Ro Rost Nim. After decades of living as brothers, fighting against a common enemy, they were now deemed traitors. We never accused any top leader without evidence or, and witnesses, Nunchia said. And Nunchia continues, we knew clearly about their betrayal and plans to topple the regime and kill innocent people in the provinces without the center's orders and knowledge. Pol Pot had evidence and witness, witnesses, so he decided to arrest them. I have no regrets, because when I read the confessions, it was very clear what they were doing. Next page. In English, the same ERN, page 103, French 00849434, Khmer 00858337. I quote, Nunchia does not deny that these party members were killed in purges ordered by the leadership and reiterates that they were traitors and needed to be smashed. In fact, 
quote, most of the leaders in the center were on Vietnam's puppet strings, end of quote. And then page 105 in English, French 00849435 to Swift 6, Khmer 00858340. I quote, Nunchia said he was not particularly disturbed when his former comrades and friends were executed. Quote, the party decided to kill them because they were betraying the party and the nation. I was not scared or sad when they were killed. They had done wrong and betrayed us so they received the kind of treatment they deserved. We were friends, but friendship and political work are separate." End of quote of Nunchia. Nunchia went on to explain the difficulties of rooting out enemies which consumed the Khmer Rouge leadership. End of quote. Donc, j'ai deux questions. I have two questions, and then I'll stop there. Nunchia stated that he had read the confessions of those leaders. He talks of Von Vett, Koitun, and Rosnim. And according to him, those confessions were clear. Witness, do you know why the leaders of Democratic Kampuchea believed in the contents of the confessions of prisoners? Vesu, the question is, why leaders, uh, why did leaders uh, believe in the prisoners' confessions witness? They mistreated him and forced him to confess. I do not believe that he uh, betrayed the Southwest accused that uh, the Northwest betrayed Anka. So the Southwest came to control the Northwest. We, in fact, this was a double cross uh, by Khmer people. They mistreated, mistreated each other. I was removed and reassigned to Chenang. I was under surveillance and uh, they found nothing about me. Dernière question. Last question. Noen Chia stated that those leaders had received the treatment they deserved. Did Hunim, that you knew very well in, in the 60s, in the 1960s and subsequently during democratic Kampuchea, did Ruotnim deserve the treatment that was meted out to him, in your opinion, or according to you? Winners, uh, did you think it was appropriate to do such things against uh, Ruhnyam? Answer, the Southwest came and accused Northwest betrayed. So that happened to our Khmer nation. The Southwest came to purge uh, the Northwest, and Northwest was uh, within uh, the Northwest. So Southwest came and uh, uh, shows that uh, they were good people. I have no further questions, Mr. President. I thank you. President, uh, thank you, Deputy Co-Prosecutor. I am grateful to you, Mr. Winners, and 
Uh, I thank you also, Nimul. The chamber will take a, the lunch break from now until 1.30. Please wait uh, uh, witness and uh, Nimul, and perhaps the defense the teams uh, may not have questions. You may not proceed, uh, Council Copper. Uh, that was exactly the reason I was rising. Um, I don't think I have any questions for him. Uh, I don't think the Kusum Pan team either, so um, we might as well let him go now. To be clear, we, the Kiyosan Pan team, do not have any questions for this witness. President, it is a, a, it's very good news. The Chamber is grateful to you, Mr. Witness. The hearing of your testimony as a witness has now come to a conclusion. The, your testimony will contribute to the settlement of the truth. You may not be accused. I wish you good luck, good health, and prosperity. I thank you also, Mr. Momratia. You may also be accused. Nimul, Lady Mul, Vesu staff, and other individuals, the chamber, the chamber is grateful to you uh, for your coordination and facilitation in uh, arranging the uh, proceeding and also the uh, technology or video link for the chamber. And in the afternoon, the chamber will continue hearing the testimony of Ngun Trek because uh, we have him as a reserve witness. And the chamber now take a lunch break and we resume at 1.30. Security personnel are instructed to bring Mr. Kisampon to the waiting room and please uh, have him returned into the courtroom before 1.30.